And at one point we're waiting and I just kind of laughed. I go, <laughs> I go, the crazy thing is this is some cowardly stuff here. Yeah. I'm like, instead of winning because their ideas are right, they're yeah. going to lock you up because they don't like what you believe in. And now it's time for another interview on the Babylon Bee Podcast. Hey guys, Merry Christmas from the Babylon Bee and from GiveSendGo.com. You know, Christmas can be a hard time of year for people financially. Uh, at Give, Send, Go, they see more tragic campaigns uh, this time of year than any other time of year. It's, you know, car accidents and house fires and that kind of stuff, the tragic stuff that happens. And Give, Send, Go has made it easy to set up campaigns to send funds to the people in your community that are hurting. So don't wait for someone else to do it. If you see something, don't just say something. Let your actions be louder than your words. Step in and help. That's the way that we can change the world forever. GiveSendGo.com is the only crowdfunding platform that actually stands for the values that liberals profess. Tolerance, inclusivity, and love. So visit GiveSendGo.com today. Hi guys, welcome to the Babylon Bee Podcast. I'm Jared Lamaster. I'm here with Siaka Masakwa. Um, he has, you may recognize him from a lot of the sketches that we've done over the last couple of years since I've been here, uh, including California's move to Texas, uh, the one that everybody loves. Um, we are going to talk about his situation right now. He was arrested last week, um, by the FBI. Um, and we are going to talk about the raid on his house. We're going to talk about, uh, January 6th, and we're going to talk about, um, the ongoing stuff that's going on with you. And by the way, thank you for being here. Dude, thank you for having um, me. Yeah, thank guys. you. Thank, this is your house. Thank, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, should, should we even let people know that? Well, yeah, we can because I've, <laughs> I've filmed enough in here that they're going to do anything at this point. Oh, this is Good a really luck. nice table. You yeah. guys have nice tables. Thank you. Yeah, we, in your we, house. we believe that tables are the uh, beginning of any strong home. We got to have strong tables. I agree with that because most of the stuff happens around a table. It so does. I agree with you. Eating, talking, fighting, you know, all the good yeah, stuff. It all happens. <laughs> and this is oak. So, so like you like the uh, solid, you like, like your solid. marriage, like your family. Be, uh, like yeah. roots, this like the good. Lord. I love it. <laughs> well, listen, I want to get serious. Okay. So it's really hard. For um, people like us, um, you know, we just get profiled for the way we look. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it's there's a system that's in place that really preju it's prejudice against uh, guys like us. You know, it's like it's keeping us keeping opportunities down for people like us. Um, you know, I, and the struggle is real. Yeah, it is. It is. And um, even my I mean, mom doesn't understand how, how no, the struggle is. But. No, because you know. Obviously, and I'll give you a hint. It's it, the word starts with B. Yeah, and uh, it's bald. I was gonna say I can't grow my hair past this either. Yeah. so it sucks. So it's really hard for people like. I this. get it. I get it. You know, um, that's why usually I go all clean, uh -huh. and then I can uh, go audition for the Black Mister Clean. You know, they're switching yeah. race swaps happening a lot now. So yeah, that's true. My opportunities opened up a lot more than it did before. <laughs> So, so you were arrested though, for real. Oh yeah, you were arrested recently. Fun stuff. Let's get into the yeah, humor. Let's get now. the good stuff. Okay, yeah. No, you told me some of the story, and there's some pretty yeah. good stuff in here. So yeah. You were arrested like two weeks ago. Yeah. Like now. No, like a, a, week ago, a week ago. Yesterday. Okay, so you yeah. wow. Yeah. How and, crazy um, is that? You were charged with four misdemeanors, mm -hmm. uh, including regards, parading, which was parading. I don't know what that means, but yeah. yes, it's good. Yeah. I, n I always hated parades, yeah. so I don't know. So That's part why two, they charge you, me. <laughs> they hate we them, got, too. We have a different administration. They're more on your side with the idea right. of parades. That's good. <laughs> so but it, was, it, was all, it all had to do with January 6th, yeah. though. Yeah. And can you just tell us the story of your arrest, um, how it happened? Um, you know, did you get word ahead of time? Was it a surprise? Like, there's a lot. Of, so tell me. Yeah, man. Um, you know, first, thank you for being here. I think it was important for us to kind of get this story out understand yeah. like you, people see me working with you guys in the B. I love you guys for everyone in the crew that's all around here they can't see you Jared Seth um and and uh, we, having this conversation we it's a serious thing that's happening in a sense in our in my life and the life of my wife and our family but I think this this is to show like God's grace is real and we have to still have that we have to still have that light you know in our mm -hmm. heart that the Lord gives us and for us we like to be a little humorous, so we are here doing that. And and yeah. it, it was um so yeah, when it comes down to an arrest, which happened. So on you're the saying it was actually very funny. I'm saying it will be funny, 
in the future. <laughs> we'll, we'll look, look back, back and go, on this. We'll go, <laughs> remember that time the FBI they, arrested me? They, they ripped me away from my pregnant wife. That was funny. <laughs> no, um, we can laugh about we it. We can now. laugh about it, yeah. Um, but, you know, a few things happened. We were coming back from the Daily Wire premiere of Lady Ballers, right? Check it out on Daily Wire Plus. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, which is a comedy, one of those original comedies or the comedy feel you have from the early or late 90s, early 2000s. And we had an amazing time there. We met with everyone, everyone from Jeremy to Seth was out there mm-hmm. to, to uh, Ben Shapiro giving us uh, child advice, baby advice. It was really funny. Mm. But we're flying back and we, we land. We're at Burbank Airport. And if anyone been to Bur- Burbank Air- Airport, you see... When you land, you come out on a tarmac. It's not like most airports where you go right through the, um, what do they call that? Like the chute. The, the chute. That's what as I they call, call it. it. Yeah, they, yeah, that's what I call they it. They throw you yeah. down through the chute. So this was right the on the tarmac. hallway. Yeah, which is always, I always like that hallway. I feel like you're coming out into a new world. But uh, that's a whole other thing. So true. So we're coming down um, off the airplane. And I see some people kind of at the base. There was this woman and I see a couple other cops and they're just standing there. And she's... She's like looking at me, but like looking at the entrance. So you kind of don't know if it's you. And I, I do see kind of they're wearing some, but I don't really notice them because you're tired. You've been flying for four and a half hours straight. You, I, I'm wearing, I'm wearing the same clothes actually prom purpose that I wore to head there because uh, I was wearing this shirt that uh, um, that had Jesus saves on the back. Hmm. And part of the reason why I wear it is because last time when I told you guys uh, after that's, the, that's really why they arrested you. That's, yeah, that's I mean, it. it didn't hurt, right? <laughs> but uh, I told you guys about the raid. Ever since then, every time I fly, I get extra scrutiny at the airport, mm-hmm. so that I have to go forty five minutes at the front right. desk. I have to get about thirty plus minutes getting searched, patted down. Everything. Well, and anyone that travels with you has to do that. Everybody, too. Right. anyone, because so, like, unfortunately Chandler had to face that when we right. went down to uh, back Texas. to be live. And, and it's crazy. Um, what what happens is that they go through all your stuff. But here's the fun part. Then you head over to the uh, the the gate, and they do the same thing at the gate as well. Yeah. So you do it at the at the TSA security. You go to your gate, think it's over, and then they come and do it there. So what I wanted to do in wearing that shirt, and I start to wear stuff that talks about God a lot when I go to the airport. Oh, that's good. Because I'm like, if they're gonna stop me, and I'm gonna get searched. People are going to be seeing Jesus' name, like like I want everyone to see, like oh Jesus, yeah, yeah they're yeah. doing it, you know. I kind of want it to do be. You have a to thing. do strip searches, um, not yet. So yeah, yeah, yeah so, so you far, could get like a, get some tattoos. And... I, no, I wouldn't do tattoos. Okay, you know, right. I'm not. I'm, there's nothing, but I will wear. I'll maybe do some henna. No, yeah. um, but we, you know, they do that, and so I was, I was coming down the escalator, or the escalator, not like Trump, but I was coming down the uh, right. the uh, exit and. The she, staircase. The staircase. Kinda, yeah. And so she comes up in front of me, and, and Charlotte's in front of me, and our friend Amber's there, who was in the movie as well. They're in front, and as I come down, I'm walking towards Charlotte. She jumps in front. She goes, Siaka Masqua? I'm like, yeah. She goes, FBI, please come, please come with us. I'm like, what? Two guys, boom, right on either side of me. Like, sir, you got to come with us. You get, you're under arrest. Let's go. I'm like, for what? The guy's like, you know what for. I'm like, no, what am I under arrest for? Because it's like, tell me. You're gonna come yeah. take me away from my family. At least she had give, you know, at least the guts to say what it is. And he's like, it's you know, it's related to January sixth. I was like, I didn't do anything wrong on January sixth. And the guy over here next to me goes, Stop talking. He's like, stop talking about it. And I go, he brought it up. You know, like I didn't do it. Wait, the FBI agent was saying, don't. They talk don't. About yeah, it. he didn't want it out loud because he goes, look. And one guy's, look, we're not trying to embarrass you here. I go, it's too late. Yeah, we're we're, we're just trying to we're trying to arrest you without embarrassing you. Yeah, you. without embarrassing you. And and, and, and and to be fair, as fair as possible, like they weren't going out their way to be you know antagonistic like about it. Yeah, they weren't trying to be jerks. They weren't being like you were you know hey you're uh your insurrection to shut up and get in the car. They weren't doing anything like mm-hmm. that. It, they were very reasonable. Like it, it, it's it's a rock and a hard place because they're called to do a job and I'm not giving them a pass for just doing my job. Don't don't please yeah. don't get a mix in that sense. Yeah, we've heard but that. But it was like you're right. But they were doing that and they were they were being cool in a way where they were talking to me. And I go, look, I'm not crazy to do anything stupid. There's four of you here with guns. There's four police officers around you with guns. I got a pregnant wife here. I'm not gonna do anything, but I'm pissed and I can be angry. And I'm gonna speak angry because I'm pissed. Right. This is this is nuts. Like right. you guys, I'm like you guys didn't have to do it like this. You could have called me. 
I would have right. come in and taken care of this. Why? Yeah. Because I know you've been watching me for two years. So you years. said that you said this. Yes. You said you could have called me. You could have. I would have been. Why did you guys make all the theatrics? What? Like, what's with the theatrics? And there was no answer, of course, at the time. Um, again, I'll give credit because uh, when they they cuffed me and they walked me over to the side and I look oh. over and Charlotte's not over there. They gave her all my stuff so that Charlotte could you know take it with her. Um, you know, and, and then we got in the car before we got in the car. They're like, hey man. Let's make sure the cuffs are okay. So how they treated me there, it's probably the best that could happen with someone being arrested. All right. We get in the car and, and I kept repeating. I go, you guys could have called me, but I know why you did it. You did it just like because of the raid. You wanted my name to go through the mud. Just like you had a Netflix actor raided and everyone go, ooh, it's a big problem. It's the same thing here, which sucks because I didn't do anything wrong. And you could have called me. And one of the agents turns, he goes... Because I had repeated, you could have called me a few times. And he's like, he's like, come on, man. He goes, okay, let me ask you seriously. If we had called you, would you come in? I go, yes. I'm first vice chair of the LA County, the largest county in the country. My wife is pregnant. We've been living in the same house for eight years. Where am I going to go? Of course I would have called. I would have I came in. Like, I, I, and so, and again, and then I go, but I know why you're doing this. You're doing this for this. You're doing it for the show. And I was like, that's the messed up part. And this is before I knew it was a mis these were misdemeanors. So at this point, I'm, you know, from being arrested at, on the tarmac to being in the car driving down to Monterey Park, I don't know that they're misdemeanors at this point. Yeah. I thought that there's stuff that it could be, you know, oh, now, we got a felony. constitutionally, don't they have to tell you what they're arresting you for? I, I thought so as well. And this is something to share with the audience. Uh, if the FBI technically doesn't, if they're investigating you. So if they've been investigating you and there's an open file, so when they came in and raided, now I'm connected to an overall investigation. They don't then have to move and go, we're arresting you for this thing. They go, we got you. Man, because they don't, we've they been don't have enough checks and balances, bro. Tell me about it, man. I mean, it, it's to see this, and, and I know a lot of the story, which kind of is interesting, and we'll get into it, but it's like it, pe people and, and, and man will do so many different things, but God always has it written out a certain way. And to have the story come out the same time with the two arsonists that burned down the Wendy's and only got $500 fine, they happened to be a black man and a white woman. And compared to me and Charlotte, or Charlotte and I, who have a black man and white woman and how they treat it, you see so clearly as day, the difference. And we wouldn't get even get that same comparison if it didn't happen right now, at this time, at this moment. We as a, as a, as a community, as a world, wouldn't have gotten a chance just to see. Look what, how they're treating people. They're not playing justice is fair right now. They're not, justice isn't blind to them. It's very, very clear who they're siding with. So, you know, um, as crazy as all this has been, um, even from that moment of coming off and Amber being with Charlotte, mm -hmm. right? So Amber ended up staying with Charlotte. They ended up hanging out. Well, what happened was yeah. the night before we, I talked to Jennifer and Tatum Shank, friends, yeah. good friends of ours who, you know, Tatum's doing the pilot with you guys, yeah. and we started Hollywood for Freedom, our our right. nonprofit. Hollywood for and Freedom. Hollywood, and and mm -hmm. we just had we just had our mingle and jingle, and, and um, I had called them up to come, and we we're supposed to you know uh, exchange some stuff for our event that was coming up. So it worked out. Instead of taking an Uber, they were going to come and pick us up. That's cool. So if this was going to happen, and I was going to get separated from my wife, she was going to technically be standing there by herself. And taking an Uber to get home by herself. A pregnant wife. Pregnant wife at 24 weeks at the And you think these guys know everything about you. That's the other piece about that that's really frustrating. Yeah. Is they know everything about everything. you. They know what color your toilet paper is. <laughs> yeah. And so, and then when you get off the plane and they know your wife's with you and they know that she's going to have to drive home alone. It's like, it was, it was about the spectacle. Which, that's what, the spectacle for misdemeanors is what... It, it, for me, is what it, it, I think it should really upset everyone. Yeah. Because look at the spectacle. Look at how much, because they don't like what you think and who you support that they will put on this spectacle. And, and thank, thank the Lord Charlotte is who she is and she's yeah. as strong as she is. Because cool. can you imagine anyone else, if they're in this point of pregnancy, what that could have done to them? Oh, I, if, I was thinking about that with my wife. Like, I don't like, know. I don't know how Christina would have handled that. That, that, that you know, it, it was again, and and, and she's the, a very strong woman, but yeah, I, but it would be very difficult to, to go through this. Well, and they they had I found out the arrest warrant was issued November fifteenth. Oh, so so they could have done it any time. 
They waited till the point of highest drama to do it, and which again, these if people Charlotte should just quit and be actors. Like that's what they. That's should. that's it. Just, just be like, just quit and get done. And this is <laughs> let's look at. And I'll show this, and I haven't shared this with anyone yet. Uh, um, God's orchestration. Charlotte later on, we'll get to it when she was in the um, courtroom. She sat there when we we're doing our bond hearing, and she said, "Oh, this is what I was prepared for." So back in high school. Mm. She was uh, she dated this kid whose mom was on the run from the FBI. She was on the lamb. She was that's on the lamb. That's what I call it. Yes, and so yeah. the they lamb. would the FBI would come and talk to her all the time. No way. Yeah, so she was used to like them, the government, in a sense, oh, yeah, questioning just, her. Just as a side note, what? Did, <laughs> why was she on the run from the? FBI? I, I don't know. Why, Where no, did I don't that know. Go? It wasn't Charlotte's know. mom. It was her boyfriend's. Mom. It was her so, boyfriend. Yeah, her, so her boyfriend's mom, and so they mom. would always question her too, being yeah. really, you know, so. She sat there and was like, oh, I see. So the fact that she was even, that happened to her so early that now the husband that she has has to enter and she could be prepared for it. Oh, um, that's interesting. So you use the Lord prepared her. Oh, that. I mean, it, the yeah. Lord prepared me. He does that stuff. It's it's so wild like he to does. look at it. Mm -hmm. And so when she was, mm -hmm. from the moment, uh, you know, we were t separated, Amber was there with her, walked her to the car where Jennifer and, and Tatum were, who yeah. were like close family friends, yeah. took her back home. Crazy and they stayed with her. Good. So basically, from the moment in the in what they tried to do to separate her and have her alone freaking out and me alone freaking out, I was with Lord in in jail. She was with friends and family, so she uh, she never was by herself. Right. She had somebody with her every moment until I got back. When I like how you said that to you, I was with the Lord in jail. Oh man, <laughs> no, it was. I wasn't alone either. No, it yeah. was. So I start. <laughs> you're yeah. like this. I I start. Um, I start talking to the officers about God. I was of like, course, oh, you know, you, hey, of you course know. you did. I just start getting into it. I go, you guys, uh... like Roman soldiers, are yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah. You heard about my Jesus? Yeah, because uh, he's Jesus. like, he'll, I know you're yeah. locked up now. And this is what I'm <laughs> telling someone to pray. I know you're locked up now, but with God, you'll be free. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so I start talking to the agents about it. And well, the one agent, she's like, no, no, I'm not really into that. And and uh, the other guy's like, oh, I'm Catholic. I'm like, oh, okay. So are you like a real Catholic or have you read the Bible? And he goes, he goes, oh, come on, man. I was like, have you read the Bible? He goes, no. I go, well, then there you go. Yeah. You know, Does so. that mean he's a real Catholic if he hasn't read the Bible? Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you just said? <laughs> I mean, that's, we'll, we'll leave it to that. Yeah, we do like the Catholics. Well, yeah, just yeah. read your Bible. That's, 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 all, that's all I'm trying to say. Right. If I, I have it, to I poke you to read the Bible. But, um, and so we start talking. And I always like to get people in the house, like, go read Romans 1. And if you don't, if yeah. you think it's crazy, then you can walk away. But you'll see we're in this time right now. Then we go through and they... they Romans 1 is a pretty harsh place to yeah. start. <laughs> but but if you look at our world right now, no, it's, it's also going, wait a yeah, minute. They exchange the truth of God in for this, a lie. Right. And it's yeah. like knowingly. And they keep going. They exchange your nature for something that's unnatural. And then that's celebrated. Yeah. One of the things they turn into is they, they focus on pride. Oh, man, we have a whole month that wants to turn into a year now, right? So there, we get to Monterey Park and I'm talking to the agents about the Lord. And then I get booked. They put me in an orange jumpsuit. And I go into the cell and by myself, there's only one other person. He's hammered drunk in the holding cell, so they leave him on that side. So they put me in into that overnight cell. Now is this this is okay, an overnight cell. It's not a federal prison. No, no, no. This is where they put the drunk tank. Yeah, this is just this in is a sense not, jail. This is the initial holding. Gen pop. Not yet. As no. I, I learned in, with my time. Yeah, you oh yeah. The what, Gen pop. What, 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 what was your time watching Oz on <laughs> HBO or I watched was a lot of TV. Okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> Um, Gen pop. So so yeah. I'm in there okay. and I start doing a little workout because I want to get tired so I can, I can just pass out. And then when I'm done, I just I turn and I get on my knees and I started doing the Lord's Prayer over and That's over good. and over as loud as I could. Good, dude. <laughs> loud enough where <laughs> and I'm, I'm here, right? I'm not like out here screaming out loud, but I'm here, but I'm just I'm yeah. being vocal. And there's a door that you can close to get into the jail set. And I hear the, the the one lady who's like working the whole night. She closes it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, fair enough. Like enough of that. Yeah, enough like of that. Enough, of, enough of that God. Um, and so I, yeah. I keep going. I finally get kind of a little tired and I lay down and she comes in. She's like, hey, do you want, you know, to read a book or anything? I go, yeah. If you have a Bible, that'd be great. She goes, I don't think we have a Bible, but I'll look. Yeah. She comes back. She's like. We had a Bible. We had a Bible. Yeah, so I'm great. So we have Fifty Shades of Gray. But, but I'll, yeah. I'll take the I'll take the Lord's word instead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so she hands me the Bible, and when I said God was with me, yeah. literally that night I fell asleep with the Bible in my hand. Yeah, that's great. And it's in. What did you read? 
I was reading Second Kings. I had to finish up Second Kings. So I had to get right. in there. Yeah, I got a. I'm a little behind in class, so I got. <laughs> so no, I got a, Second Kings. Yeah, right. so I was, I was getting to getting to into Second yeah. Kings, and um, and so the next morning they came and they picked me up, and the agents had to take me over to because it's a whole process, and they had to take me to the marshals. So I get back into my clothes, which included that Jesus Save shirt, sweatpants. But as they're going, everything you're getting cuffed every time. You're not just walking around, so you're cuffed. Take me to the marshals. Um, you know, I'm complaining, of course. Like, this yeah. is crazy. You could have still called me. Like, it's just kept repeating the same things. And at one point, we're waiting, and I just kind of laughed. I go, <laughs> I go, the crazy thing is, there's some cowardly stuff here. Yeah. I'm like, instead of winning because their ideas are right, they're yeah. going to lock you up because they don't like what you believe and what you're mentioning, you know, verbally. So uh, you're you're saying this to the marshals. You're saying. No, I'm saying it's the FBI. To the FBI, because we're like, waiting. Hey, FBI, you no. know you guys are a bunch of no, not you guys are. I was just like, this whole thing is cowardly moves. Yellow, because because like again, I, and not not to you know the agents who are there, they have a decision to make. But the overall mm-hmm. act of what's going on to watch to raid someone's house, watch them for two years, harass them at the airport, yeah, the whole time to then come to a point where you take them away from their wife, you lock them up for a night, wanting them to stay off for the whole weekend because I you know I'll get into that. For four misdemeanors? But ultimately, because we're out here saying, like, it's not bad to love your country, and I support Trump, and I support America first. And they're like, no, we got to lock you up. Or And Jesus is God. No, we got to lock you. It's like, yeah. that's cowardly, guys. And men are not women. Yeah, that's cowardly at the end of the day. Right. Like, you know, the First Amendment, like, it, it, it tells them this is our God-given right. Not, right. You, let's see, you get a chance to exercise that if you espouse to these rules here no you get a right to speak it however you want and if you happen to get popular over it, over it that's just the way it goes but that's the way authoritarians are though they yes. are cowards that's that's that was my because, point to because it. their entire their entire power structure is based on them exerting that power because yes. they don't have good ideas yes and and i even told them I, I said to them i go i hope i go i hope you guys stay on the winning side to the agents I go, I hope you stay on the winning side because the right it sucks. side of history. <laughs> right. I go, because it sucks being on the other side and having to go through something like this because it's what you think. Yeah. It was very, because I, I did, again, I want to point out, like, it's not about the individuals that were sitting here, right? Like, yeah. like we talk about in Ephesians 6, it's not about mm-hmm. flesh and blood, it's about the principalities. So I wanted to point out, I was like, you guys, this whole thing is cowardly stuff. I hope you stay on, the, on this side because if you're on that side of things, you don't have to deal with being on the other side where people come at you in that way because your ideas. Well, you know, it's interesting because not all the FBI, I like you, I like you making this point because not all the FBI agents mm-hmm. are a bunch of jerks. They're not all totalitarians. No. Uh, I think it's, it's important to make that clear. I think the upper echelon leadership is That's probably a, in that space. Yeah. But I would say, because we've mocked the FBI together, <laughs> yes, like, like yes. a lot, like the, the yeah, two yeah. of us play FBI. <laughs> yeah, all the time. We yeah. play FBI agents yeah. all the time. And, and we've and done we, it. We make fun of them all the time. My Pillow's patented adjustable fill stay cool technology and fluffy design that will not go flat, no matter how many Trump supporters I beat with it. Where were you on January 6th? Scum! You want me to do it again? I'll hit you again! Is that what you want? Go ahead! It's so comfortable. Are you going to the PTA meeting tonight? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I can't believe they put critical race theory in an algebra book. Bingo. Sounds like a couple ultra mega domestic terrorists to me. Hi. My name is Joe, and I was wrongfully incarcerated by the United States government for a mostly peaceful protest. And we did one in particular where we were, it's the MyPillow commercial yeah, where I'm beating yeah. you with a MyPillow. Yeah, 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 it was after, after the initial, uh, <laughs> after initial raid, it was no, like, let's get him in here. And it, it was funny, because that's how it went for me. No. And Mike Lindell uh, had just been, yeah, he, he had just, just been, been kind of like well, raided to you. Yeah. And so we wanted to make fun of the FBI, and we did it. We got a lot of comments from FBI yeah. agents. Yeah. That were like, we're so glad you guys are making fun of the FBI right now because we hate it too. Well, so and, there are those good and, FBI and agents. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I've heard from former agents and current, well, okay, I won't say current because they're watching. They probably know anyway. But former agents who were just like, they don't they don't recognize the FBI that they left or that they yeah. loved. Right. They don't recognize it. So, And I'll say again, those two agents... They were fine. We were right. talking, chatting, like you know, they help they they helped me out as best they can to make me as comfortable as I could be in that situation, right? Right. Um, so for again, for that, that's not what it's about. It's about this overall idea of are your free thoughts and expression. It's why our country was founded. Right. It's why 
My mom left where she was to come to America and raise her kids here. Where was she? She was in Liberia, West Africa. Mm. And the crazy thing about it is that, you know, when I finally got out, I was able to talk to my mom. She told me last year, she and she didn't want to tell me this and didn't let me know until uh, for some reason it came to her. She goes, so she lost her dad at 12. Mm -hmm. And her dad, my grandfather, was the main pastor at the main church of Liberia, Providence Church. Back in the day when she was that age, the government would arrest and take out party opposition leaders. Mm -hmm. Went to him and told him, hey, we need you to stop talking about politics from the pulpit. He said, no. My mom lost her dad in a car accident when she was 12. Mm -hmm. And hey, so now you say like a car accident, right? No. Yep. Okay. And so now hmm. let's fast forward and she did her best to get her children away from even the idea of something like that happening. Right. And now her son for his ideas. So, Keep on going. you know, she left one country where her dad was focused and attacked by the government to move over here in a place where it's not supposed to happen. Now her son's her son is targeted by the government. For his for his ideas for his ideas and that's not, it not, not even for any kind of violence, violence. or doing anything or yeah that's even way. calling people to do violence like I haven't right. never called anyone to no do of course not violent. so the fact that it's and I and I said this at church the other day and I'll say this here in this interview my mom's not a believer but um you know everyone anyone watching if you can pray for her just for um I don't I don't know how uh, I don't know where that mind can be. You know, you saw something happen to your father and now it's happening to your son yeah. in a certain way. So prayers can do wonders, you know, yeah. and, and um, I've seen it in my life. So if we can just put that out there for her. That's like very important for me. Um, yeah. Because it sucks. You know, it sucks that and I know she feels helpless sure. right now. So, yeah, it, it's wild to see that this is what's happening in this country now based on ideas. Yeah. Like if, if I had beaten the crap out of somebody and shook sure. and hung them upside down, whatever it was, you got me. Now it now it is true. It's it's about the ideology yes. that you that you. But also, <clears throat> did you go into the Capitol building? I step I step foot into the archway. Um, in the video, we've counted seventy one seconds. So yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So we step foot into the archway. So, but there we we know that it's really about the ideas, but mm -hmm. they're kind of using the fact that you crossed the threshold. Yes. Uh, and saying that that's really the problem that you crossed the threshold. Well, they're adding that into there's a probable cause. There's right? probable cause, and in that and there's videos out there. Dude, I but there were billions of people crossing. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that was the but like that was you the point. were like one of uh, the way, so many. The way I look at it is it's a sting, sting operation. Yeah, right. And so and it's because you have a high profile. I mean, higher profile than other folks, and so and then you have it's the idea of entrapment, is as far as the way I look at it, at that doorway. Oh yeah. Let's I was there. That. I was there an hour. First of all, I got there an hour after everything happened. Why did I go there? It wasn't because Trump said, Mark, go march in the Capitol peacefully mm -hmm. and have your voices heard, which he said multiple times. Mm -hmm. It's because I went back to the hotel room, which is by Freedom Plaza, which is about a 20 minute walk from uh, the Washington Monument. Hang out in there. I turn on the TV to see what the news would be saying about this. We're coming from walking and singing with a bunch of people. And go, well, let's see what the news is going to say about this. What were you singing? I forget. Uh, I have to look in the video. Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one. Oh, my goodness. How do you know? Um, and so I turned on the TV and it was MSNBC. And this 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 uh, reporter was like, it's a somber moment. There were shots fired. We thought blood. On and I'm like, they're they're lying because they've been lying the entire time Trump has been elected. It's probably not more. I just didn't pay attention. And so, so I was there and, and so, so then I put my boots on, I'm like, I'm going to go down and I'm going to tell them, I'm going to find that camera person to stand behind them and stand there full of it. Right. They're to yeah. the line. Yeah. That's why I went to the Capitol. Right. So I went, I went to DC for the speech and then I was done. Why? Because since 2020 of June, I've been going to rallies over and over up until the election and after and through 21. So I was mm -hmm. going to enough rallies where in this moment, I was like, I get it. I'm not going to just go there and be like, da, 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 da. It's like, they're, they're going to do what they're going to do regardless if I'm screaming right there or not. Right. And it was cold and I was like, I'm just going to go home. Then I put on my boots and I walked down to the Capitol. Everyone can Google it right now from the JW Marriott to the Capitol. It's 20, they say 27 minute walk. So it took me at least a half hour because I wasn't running. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got there, it was an hour after 
this point, no one's talking about ray, uh, uh, storming anything. No one's talking about any of this stuff going on. So I get there and the mood is just really chill. I run into some friends that I knew from Beverly Hills. We do a little interview with someone. There's a scaffold. I had the American flag there. In the middle of our interview, they start singing the national anthem. We stop to sing the national anthem. Or go up, go walk up the top, and I'm like walking around. I'm videoing all this stuff. You see some broken glass. People are kind of just making their statements, basically stuff you've seen in different in different uh, rallies outside of the violence that happened. There's outside of the stuff that was broken, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was one point I saw before I got closer to the the actual building. It was right on the steps. I saw men grabbing other men and trying to push and going, "Let's go!" and trying to push them to go forward. Which was something that I noticed because at the Beverly Hills rally, we had issues with Antifa. When we had Antifa come in a big group and we were on one side and the cops put stanchions here, the kids we saw who were part of Antifa two weeks earlier were standing on our side wearing MAGA stuff, yelling at Antifa. And I go, they're trying to get the crowd worked up. Just like I saw these guys grabbing men and going, come on, and trying to push them forward. And I'm thinking to myself. So these are all hired Antifa guns. I, like at this point, about, I'm just saying what it. Or, I, or it, FBI agents. I'm just saying what it looked like because I saw something like that before. What I can claim what it is exactly, I don't know. But I know it's cowardice because men, real men go, follow me. They don't push someone else in front and go, go in there. You know what I mean? And that was the difference. That's why I'm sitting there and I saw it happen two different times. Mm. But anyway, I'm walking around. I get to the door. I'm rambling. I'm like, this is this is why people come here because it's a free country. Da, 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 da. Right. And we're going towards that doorway. And in there, they're saying, I even talked to someone. And this, I was all on video. I go, what's going on? Oh, they're letting us in over here. Who's letting us in over here? They. Meaning they the people who are opening the door, police. Like, it's... If someone says they're letting us in over here, how do I knowingly know that's a trespass? And then people were walking in and we're shuffling in like we're going to a football game. Like it's college football Saturday and everyone's just kind of shuffling in. And I'm like, oh, okay. And we get right to the front door and then they stop us where I'm in there. And then they stop us and you'll see even on uh, what they have as a piece of evidence, you see my arm outstretched like I'm obviously stopped and looking here and the cops are standing there. I talked to one cop and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, hey, I heard he got on Pelosi's desk. Is that true? He goes, I don't know. I was like, man, it's crazy. Then I turn this way and the guys, some guy comes up, he's full uh, ride gear. He's like, I need you guys to go back the other way. All right, we're going to do it. Fine. You see, we're being reasonable. Great. Hey, guys, let's go. So, again, how am I knowingly trespassing is when someone, as soon as anyone with authority said, you need to leave, not only did I do that, but I also directed others to do that. But you and everybody else. Exactly. Like there was no crazy guy that was like, no way. Yeah. There, Down from, with the authoritarian not, left. Not that, <laughs> you know, like, right. Not that we saw that, not when I was there and not, you know, outside of the, those, the a little bit of footage they've shown of some people fighting back. And a lot of that stuff was in bottleneck and people getting in that crowd and getting tight. And then one side <clears> hitting <throat> another side, defending themselves. You know, we've seen video now where a peaceful crowd standing there and then gets shot with pepper pepper pellets in there. Why are you doing this? Yeah. So there was there was an attempt to rile people up and get people in a certain place. The other reason why I know it was mm -hmm. something else happening because I've been to D.C. twice at this point with other uh, uh, patriots. I've been here in Los Angeles and Southern Cal at these different rallies. We're never the ones to start violence. We're never the ones to go looking for violence. It's always coming over and defense. Mm. So this didn't make sense just from that, just from my own year experience. Yeah. Of like, wait a second, what? And again, at that point, there was no, they stormed anything. It was right. people were there. There was no idea of a storming going on. Yeah. It was more like a mosey. <laughs> more of a shuffle, I would like shuffle. to say. A shuffle mosey. Less of a storm. And, a, and yeah. more of a mosey. More of a... And, and so then I came back out, right? Scroll. I go to this window, which now now when I look back at the at the video, it was the window, infamous one they show where people were throwing yeah. the uh, uh, flags in there. And I'm looking over and I'm recording like, man, this is crazy. And I see one guy, he's a police officer who got hit in the head with a, uh, um, they, they threw back their uh, pepper spray canister. So they threw it back and it hit this guy on his head and one of the cops. And you hear me, I go, hey man, are you okay? Mm -hmm. I saw them do that to you. That's not cool. And, then, and while I'm, I'm talking to him here, you see all the police just hanging out on, inside, chilling. Again, nobody's indicating to me, get out of here. You need to get out. You need to leave. There's no signs anywhere that says restricted. Get out. You need to leave. Nothing. 
Was that police officer that you spoke with? Was he pretty rational? And you were just saying he was. I mean, he had his mask on. He didn't really verbally respond. He was just like he just shrugged. I was like, hey, I I go. I remember I said, uh, um, so I heard there's a curfew going on tonight, right? Like six. He goes, I go, who's going to enforce that? And he kind of just shrugs again. And I crack a joke, you know. I go, I go, not you. The clock in the wall says you're done, huh? He's like, "Ah." and I'm like, all right, laugh, and I walk away. Yeah. And that was my experience at the Capitol in that, you know, in that setting. And then you walked away, you went home? That I walked away and I was walking around to see the last few of everything that was going around the building. So I'm by the steps, right? Yeah. Run into some people that I saw either online or I knew from Beverly Hills saying, what's up? Yeah. And then I turned and left. And when I left, I was walking down the street with people and I looked over to my right and I see cars that were parked. And I start chuckling. And, and people, I was like, you know what's funny? If this is a BLM ride, all these cars would be burning right now. Mm-hmm. And we saw no violence happen or nothing happen towards anything outside of what people, I guess, pointed their eye or two, which was the Capitol, you know, and all that. Went home, didn't think anything of it. And, you know, we fast forward and my house is being raided fast forward and I'm being arrested. That's at so the crazy. Yeah, so really, it's it, this is all about curiosity. Like you came back because you were curious. Well, I came back initially to go tell yeah. MSNBC that they were lying. And well, then I stayed yeah. there because I was like, whoa, whoa, I can't believe, whoa, look what's well, going there's, on. There's something about it that's historical too. I think I think I would uh, I would have done the same thing. Like I would have gone back in. I would have been interested. Especially and, when it, there, there was know, no indication. Curious, like, man, what's going on here? But there's no indication like stop. Yeah. Right? It's well, like if there was a the stop doors, indication. The doors are wide open. Yeah. And nobody's telling you to stop. Everyone's chilling out. And as soon as they do, you do. <laughs> and you right. turn and go anywhere. Some but, guys like get out of here. But like, everything right. was like Sorry. people were just moving around. Even Sorry, pal. the uh, riot gear guys who were outside were just standing there. Yeah, they weren't like. And look, you you weren't even dressed like a buffalo or anything. <laughs> no, I was was dre- dressed like a maga though. So that's uh, that's, that's one true. of the most dangerous. But how species. can you be a maga? Just got to wear the hat. Okay, that's it. The hat. Because I was like, I'm surprised that they've come after you now. No. the doj you know because you're you're a democrat right aren't you a democrat? what no 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 i just no 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 i lost that i lost that when i didn't vote for joe remember <laughs> oh that's so, right you're not yeah, black i'm not black either so oh, don't please that's don't it. that's it please don't uh you gotta fill yeah. out the census properly don't that's do right. that again that's so interesting you know? now and you've worked with us do you think the Babylon bees under scrutiny <laughs> yes you do but i think all conservative is you know like any conservative media yes i don't think it has anything to do with necessarily me being a part of it i think hmm. All, all uh, conservative anything that wants to make a noise, wants to be loud about it, it's being watched and being monitored. I mean, it, unfortunately, that's just kind of how our intelligence agency has worked. And it goes all the way back to now the Patriot Act opening that door, you know? Yeah. And so now we're so sitting So whoever's in charge is probably spying on the opposite side. Yes. No. So even when we're in charge, when the conservatives yeah. are in charge, we're probably spying on the I mean, teams. when have you seen government give up the powers they have? For willingly <laughs> when do you see him pass george law, we washington that's there that was and that was the first was that the first and last that was time the first and last it. time that we saw people <laughs> willingly go you know what all right we're gonna do it. i mean yeah we have an election that goes through that process but we saw after trump was elected for four years it was it was a fraudulent election and we saw what just happened recently so we've been going through an issue here in this country and we have to get back to actually having conversations with each other and not letting the news media to dictate how we talk to each other yeah, you know, I wish they would get mess. people in there that would stop just playing it up and, and well, playing for theater. Well, part just, of it, yeah. I'll tell you like this, and this is what they wrote in the article after the raid. Part of it is we, us good men here, what men and women here, we need to be the ones running the show. Like to rely on those coming from places like Harvard and Yale, which are okay with people screaming genocide to Jews yeah. today. Right. And then expect them to do the right things when they're in the office for you and my family. Like they don't have the they don't have the same thought process or, or, or brain synapses to 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 cater to what we want. So why should we then expect them to? I know that was the, that was the weirdest story from last week. I think was yeah. where the the heads of the Ivy League wouldn't say that calling for the genocide of Jews was bad. And that's and they wouldn't even say it. But that tells you and a lot of those Ivy Leagues, they produce the lawyers. They produce the people that then go out and write the laws. Yeah, they produce their activists. They produce activists. Yeah. So now we're we're the ones sitting there going, I hope this turns into a better thing. But then those mm-hmm. that are tasked to make sure that we're safe tend to then be those same characters that actually want to take us out. Yeah. And they don't care. Yeah. But that's one thing I always say. I'm like, where's Black Lives Matter when I got the man directly after me, ripping me away from my family? I didn't see anybody. Right. I didn't see any marches up up in front, but when you kill a criminal for putting a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach, then he gets five funerals and a golden casket 
Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? You're telling us what type of, like, as a black person, this is how you should move. You're telling us as a white person, this is how you're right. supposed to see black people. That's right. Like, think about that. That's right. People can literally burn down Wendy's and get a fine for 500 that's bucks. That's just culture. That, like, they're burning down Wendy's. It's a culture. That's a cult. Thing. Don't worry about that. That's not it's how It's justifiable be. because they've been oppressed. It's interesting. It's, it's with the Palestinians right now, too. That, well, it's the same group. Yeah. It's the same group. I wouldn't group say Palestinians. Everything. I would say Hamas. I Hamas. Say, you should say, say, say Hamas, Hamas because these people don't understand. They're cheering for what Hamas is about. They don't get it. They yeah. get it. And so, you know, we are. You know what's weird? This is something I heard last week mm-hmm. about Hamas. This is a side note. But I heard that the word that oh, God, yeah. that the word for evil yeah, it's Hamas. is Hamas yeah. in, in Hebrew. Yeah. It's the word for when God looked down on earth and saw that the world was evil. Yeah, right. When he was talking about it in, in Genesis, yeah. in Genesis with Noah, yeah. the word is he looked down and he saw that the world was Hamas. Hamas. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting. And I'll then, tell you what. That is judgment felt. Words matter. And we, when we live in this world right now where they're trying to... Uh, flip words on his head and ideas and understanding of a definition of words it's for a reason Mm -hmm. right the the revelation talks about you know the great deception you think it's just going to be some guy lying to you or maybe it'll be words also being shifted literally in our in our dictionaries as we speak well we have we serve a god who cares very much about words and he actually he really cares about his own name yep so he keeps giving us names he's like i'm very specific about this this is my name use my name don't use someone else's don't use my name in vain you know he's very much about like words and names and so you Mm -hmm. see how yeah he cares about definitions of things we can call him the leftist or whoever i like personally called the godless because the godless doesn't know one political side or the other right the godless is everywhere in culture that's right. But we see the godless wanting to ban certain such things as Jesus or the Bible. They want to ban. It keeps it tells me that's more true. Because Must again, be. if your ideas are good, the idea can live on its own. That's you don't right. need to stranglehold everything else that comes into play because your idea is good. Yeah. You win out on that and they know it'll never win. They'll that's never right. win out on that. And 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 we need to as Christians we have to be yeah. Isaiah one nine. We have to, or Joshua nine. Sorry, we have to be bold and courageous. Strong God's and courageous. We have to. Why do we wait? Why do we want to be quiet and separate politics from a religion? No. Mm-hmm. How I raise my children is so they go out in the world and be better in the world. Then that's how they should. That's how they're going to yeah. vote. How they're going to treat your kids. How they're going to treat others. Yeah. Why do we then go? No, separate that. That's a big trap. Yeah. Don't separate it. Be louder about your faith. Yeah. lean into it this is the it's funny because my last my last two questions one of them was the what is the christian perspective on this oh, and nice. i think we're already getting into it yeah. naturally because the christian perspective is to be bold and to live who you really are and i love that i think what you're saying is really true i said that to somebody i think yesterday because they were like we got to like try to skirt the line it was somebody, no. somebody in entertainment yeah that was saying we can't really that we, we have to like right down the middle we got to figure out how not to offend anyone and I was like, listen. But God is offensive. <laughs> you have got to just be who you are. Yes. You've got to be who you are and you've got to live it out loud. And that's what I love about you because you are who you are. You're living it out loud. And yes, you've gotten some kickback because anyone that lives the truth will get kickback. But also, you've also got a lot of favor as well. And well I think there's a lot of good things happening in your life now one, too. One thing I noticed about yeah. that, um, and, and yeah, I've always been kind of a, a bolsterous person in that sense and then part of acting you you kind of are that mm-hmm. but I, I remember in in august of 2020 when everything was going on and just after the summer of love right and they've been screaming blm yeah. this whole time yeah the season of blood Se- the season of blood as brandon toy i think that's a great so, way to yeah. say the and great, the great brandon toy wherever he is wherever now. he is um so so we had a you know so i'm staying there and it was like 200 people were killed in chicago right yeah 173 of them were all black people. And you hear a word about those killed by other black people in Chicago at the time. And then we have all the other cities like Seattle, your Chaz, all the stuff that mm-hmm. were just what about bald of violence. Pe- how many bald people were killed? We don't want to get into that. Right? <laughs> That's, I don't want to do that to us. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, just, I ruined your <laughs> No, no, I ruined your no, point. no. So, so <laughs> we're, we're looking and we're seeing them, in a sense, sacrifice people. And I did a post on Instagram and my friend took a picture. I'm walking my dog and I have a little poncho and I put it out there. And I'm at this point, like, yeah, I'm at the Love rallies, the but I was like, mm-hmm. I was a little quiet about me. I was kind of going under a different name, chief in the Americano. I was quiet about me, myself kind of being loud about it. And I put this post and we're walking down this road and I said, you know, take the road less traveled. 
you'd be surprised what you find. Mm. And <laughs> I didn't know three years later all the things that I went through and been through and experienced since then. But I do know God was like, like going, go. Like, I couldn't tell you exactly. His word. I just know he was like, go, like, come on, go. And then next thing you know, we're just, I'm just getting louder and louder at these rallies and things. Yeah. People, hey, we want you to speak. We want you to come. And it wasn't because, yeah. it wasn't like, man, I'm going to go out there and become the next speaker. I'm going to become the next rally guy. No, it right. wasn't that at all. It was seeing what's going on and just hitting a point of feeling like no one else is doing it. No one else is saying it. Right. No one else is expressing it in the way that I think you could get out. Let me go. Let me do it. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, you know, all the different stuff we talked about before started coming down the line, good and bad, like being on a censorship list here in California, but then having an opportunity to go down to Mar-a-Lago, you know, right. uh, 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 being fired from or being cut by my agents and managers, one just with one email and nothing else to never working in Hollywood again, to working with the B, being a dramatic actor in Hollywood, all of a sudden being now going into comedy with you guys and right. working with the B and Daily Wire Daily and actually Wire, yeah. feeling like I have a more control of my career. Being at a point where we see people like Johnny Depp cancel for an allegation to when this happened to me, major producer for Daily Wire calls my wife mm -hmm. to check in on her. Right. Talks to me the next day and says, we're not ashamed of you. Right. Keep pushing the movie. Do your thing. We got your back. Let us know what you need. Like, yeah. And I'm supposed to shut up for this thing over here that's willing to throw exactly. you under the bus in a heartbeat. You just realize all who your friends are. And that's what he said. He goes. <laughs> he said, if we didn't, yeah. if we didn't have your back, I wouldn't consider you a friend. Or I mean, you couldn't call us friends. And I'm like, yeah. And that's coming off of Hollywood, where people, powerful people I know in the industry, go, I can't talk or I'll never work again. That's right. They're afraid to speak over there. We're over here to go. We wouldn't be your friend if we didn't. That's right. We got you. Yep. Where am I? Like, this is telling me never go over there again. You right. know what I mean? Well, this was our first, that was our first thought. Um, we were trying to finish our shoot, but we were also trying to figure out how to support you. Uh, that was our next thing. So then Seth gets involved and Kyle gets involved and everybody I mean, starts talking about what are we going to do for Siaka? And I love that. And I think because we do, we are supporting of you. And I think that uh, you're finding out that you have a massive network of people that are under you, that have undergirded you, that are surrounding you. You are not alone. You know, there's times, I'll be honest with you, there's times <laughs> where in the last two years, because I was used to working in a certain way in Hollywood where you like, man, I just kind of wish the doors were open a little more or more things would be happening because you feel frustrated. And and, and, yeah. and this is also, you forget, it's, it's a newer world being created at the end of the day. It's not like the Hollywood of, you know, almost 80 years of industry infrastructure where they know how yeah. it's going to work. And when I when I was transferred from that, from the U.S. Marshals to the courthouse and I walked in to the court and have you shackled. Mm -hmm. You know, from your wrist to your waist to your ankles. And I'm shuffling in, mm -hmm. you know. And I look over and I'm looking for my wife and the lawyer. That's who I'm thinking is there, maybe one other person, right? I look over and there's 15 people mm -hmm. from different walks of life, from our church mm -hmm. to, you know, people who ran for office that I've known to just old family friends. To the pastor who married us. Mm -hmm. And that just blew my mind already. And I was like, Whoa. And I didn't even see Charlotte in that beginning because I couldn't find her because there were so many people that I was like, you, oh, wow. Well, it's so great to see you. And, but the beautiful thing when I said, again, God was with me that entire time. Yeah. When we were going from the, uh, the Marshall's office or Marshall's building to the courthouse or you know, transfer, there's this big, tall, white guy. He's probably like bald head like you, a little Another beard, ball. but he's 6'2". So, yeah. sad. <laughs> so so and he's big dude he's tatted from his neck all the way down pants basically you look over and go oh there, there's a white supremacist uh yeah. you know neo-nazi in jail and and it was this cast of characters very interesting we start walking i happen to be in front of the four other guys i was with mm -hmm. that were good, being transported and i'm walking and the guy says hey man nice shirt 
So I go, oh, hey, yeah, no, you know, Jesus saved my life. And da, 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 da. I just start talking God. He's like, yeah, man, I start reading the Bible. Boom, boom, boom. He's just talking God. We're sitting in the transport, we're heading over there, and we're talking about God. And we get into the Count of Monte Cristo, that book. We get into the Lord of the Rings series. We think we start talking about novels in there between him, me, and like three other guys in there. We get we go through the courtroom. I see the support. We get to the back. Now, a lot of people don't know when you're in the back of the courtroom waiting to be called out, you're in a holding cell. So you're still sitting there cuffed or, you know, cuffed inside a cell while there's the, the uh, marshals are sitting there waiting to let you out, you know, one at a time. And so we're back there and we're talking and. I'm getting into, I'm telling them, you know, man, you should try reading. I was all Romans. Romans is just like, it just blew my mind. I'm like, wait a second. We it is it. amazing. Right. And so we start talking about it some more. And he's like, he goes, hey, man, he goes, hey, you mind praying real quick? I'm like, you want me? Yeah, for everybody. So we start praying. I said something to the line of like, no matter what happens, if we're, if we're let out, because this is a bond hearing to possibly be let out. He goes, if we're let out or we're not, we know that as long as we rely on Jesus, we're going to be fine. And, and we got done and, you know, people were, they really took the prayer. They really, um, yeah. you know, took it, took it well. And, uh, so then we started, uh, we started going in, everyone started going out for their case and they go out and come back and be like, Oh, that, that judge is a B. She sucks. That is me. I'm reasonable. And I was like, well, you know, in my mind, in my mind, I'm prepared to be in jail until I'm not. Because the one thing about jail, the color scheme's the same. It's all this kind of gray, white. There's no clocks, so you have no idea. It's like Vegas, but worse. Because you have no idea what time it is right when you're inside. It's worse than Vegas. It's worse than Vegas. Wow. And so every guy's going and coming. Everyone's going and coming. The guy, the big tall dude, right? He's in there. For, he's been in there for 18 years. He had just the year before stabbed somebody. That's that's who we're around. We're against. We're around gun runners. We're around people who've committed murder. Dang. And so I'm getting ready to go. And all the guys, hey, man, we hope you get out. It's like, oh, thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Like, everyone's like, good luck, good luck. Thanks, pal. I go shuffling out. Uh, they open the door. I walk out. Everyone who was there, <laughs> stand up. Hmm. And I'm just like, like, imagine just a wave pushing at you because you yeah. see everyone just stand up. So I'm shuffling over. I'm trying to kind of keep it together. Right? Like, don't cry. Don't cry. Right? Yeah, and then yeah. Charlotte's wearing, she's in all black uh black uh dress and she has her ring or my ring on her necklace right and uh as i'm coming out she she grabs her bible she walks around uh she walks around the uh, bench to come sit next to my lawyer as we're walking by it just it timed out i just walked over gave her a little kiss we gave each other a little kiss and she just boom stands there and i'm I, i'm i jared i am just just to know I had back like that, you know? And, and again, I didn't know I had back like that yeah. until I came out. That's right. But just seeing that back like that there, standing up for me, I have, like, no one can tell me God isn't real. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. I saw what happened. I saw, because yeah. evil is going to do what it's going to do. Yeah. But when you see God working in that evil, mm -hmm. and then and the judge was super reasonable, the DA was reasonable, they're like, all right, basically, long story short there, they're like, we're going to let you out. Right. I just had to go do the process. But let me tell you how the Lord continues to work. <laughs> so I, I leave thinking, I'm done. But I was supposed to sign paperwork first mm. before I left the courtroom. And so was the DA. DA leaves. I leave. So if the paperwork doesn't get signed, I don't get out. Mm. One of our friends that uh, goes to church with us, she takes off. <laughs> Boom! Takes off in the courtroom, running, running in this building, trying to find the DA who's leaving. Yeah. Court's done in 10 minutes for the weekend. She takes off. She finds him in the parking lot on his phone like he's leaving. She's like, nope, we need you. Brings him back. The, the court reporter who was going to you know, finalize everything is like, I got to catch my train. Like, I'm out. Right. They're like, no, no, we'll give you a ride. And they allow my lawyer to sign for me, a DA sign, sign. Mind you, I'm on the transport heading back to the marshal's like, Oh, I can't wait to get home, sit down in my bed, all this stuff. And they're still fighting for me, man. Hmm. There's <laughs> people <I> mean... <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I mean, and here's the funny thing. The woman who ran to do it, she actually a year ago named her little speedster car after me. <laughs> so, so it was funny this that she was the one. Siaka. Yeah, and it was funny. She was the one that ran and, and got oh, this guy. Funny. And I walk out. 
and it's you know big empty building at this point i walk out and charlotte's right there my lawyer's right next to her yeah and i run up and give her a hug and then i go outside and i see uh everyone who was in there like they start coming it's almost like they start coming out the woodworks because they're yeah. parked up the street a little bit and then we do big hug together and i you know that moment on mm. you know friends it's friends like uh, that have worked with me on the campaign the friends brandon and trish they were there like ready to go getting our gifts and go going mm-hmm. so that we get the message out there get our story out there first yeah because we know this is a, this is a, a narrative game mm. a narrative war that we're in at the end yeah, of the day for sure. and just like the raid after raid my house first thing we did was boop we did a live to let them know we've been raided and just like this as soon as they were to get out we had our gifts and go ready with our story on there we were able to go and have conversations with with you know trusted sources and and i mean it's night and day with the media support that's yeah. happened from post millennium to epoch times to red um, state to you guys like everyone compared to before where it was like the uh, LA Times, the Daily Mail, everyone's like, actor rated, actor rated over here is like Siakam persecuted. Yeah. And it's like, because that's what's happening. But it's not, honestly, it's not just about me though. Because fortunate enough in this situation, we can get you guys to be here. We can get Seth to make a post that then Elon Musk can make a statement on. Yeah. But where's that grandma who's been in jail for a year? Right. You know, where, right. where, where, where are that grandfather? Where, where are those people who were just innocent? Thinking they were going there to protest and express their voice and practice their First Amendment, who have been picked up in the darkness of the night that no one knows. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, 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 just maybe, this is an opportunity for elected officials and the rest of the country to go, you know what? Stop, yeah. stop, stop. I don't care if I'm a, a Democrat. This isn't cool. Stop it. Mm. Stop. Stop. Because they have too much power. Yes. For yeah. misdemeanors. Right. Stop politically persecuting because that's not what this country was it, built on. It's so reminiscent of uh, Solzhenitsyn. It's so reminiscent of the, the Gulag Archipelago. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. It reminds me. That's it. You didn't even have to do anything to get picked up by your political opposition. They send you off and you'd never You're hear done. from these people again. And that's what that's what happened. But, you know, Solzhenitsyn's whole point was just don't live by lies at least. If you can speak up, then you need to speak up. Yep. And that's what, that's what you're doing. It's also hopefully what we're doing in the, in the way we do satire. It's yeah. like we speak up against all these ideas. Well, it's very important it's what we're doing. It's extremely important. Mm-hmm. And it's extremely important for society, for a healthy society. Yes. And, um, you know, the things I'm learning from listening to you talk are that we as, as people that believe these things, we need to, first of all, not take the bait when it's presented to us. We got to recognize that there's bait out there. Yeah. Yes. We can't trust this. We can't trust yes. them. Yes. And secondly, we've got to make sure that we are on the up and up with everything. And then we, we got to speak up when we get a chance. Exactly. And, and then, then when we have friends like you, because you and you and I are friends. We're yeah. not we're not just like just like cracking. You yeah, know, we're not we're not just work, it's not just an interview. Just co-workers. Yeah, like yeah. honestly, it's the reason why I love I love the fact that I got to interview is because you and I hang out outside, we're friends and um, we're connected. And so when you have friends go through stuff like this, support them, talk about it, and um please and don't don't let don't let grandma disappear. Yeah. Don't let grandma disappear. And not quietly, time. not quietly into the night. You no, know, no. Um, yeah. Like I said, a lot of this, mm-hmm. a lot of this, this has to be God's timing because. Oh yeah. Pray. Right, right off of the premiere, mm-hmm. landing back here in the mood to move to try to embarrass. It brought support that I know two weeks earlier or two weeks later would not have been in the same yeah. level. The Lord timed it right. Oh, so wow. if they're gonna move, they're gonna do that. He must. He knew. Yeah. Of course, he knew. Because again, like I said, the things and the opportunities that are opening up. Because I don't look at this as just what happened to me. Like I said, mm-hmm. I look at this as a chance now to go. This is what they've been doing. Yeah. And you're upset at that it's happening to me. Let's go check out that grandma. Let's go check out that FBI. grandma. FBI, more like you KGB. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, it is, it's true though. Like so. in, in many ways. So I, I think you're, you're you're absolutely right. You know the thing is. In this world, we will have trouble, but take heart. Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. And so I think that that's great. The last thing is we need to pray. We need to pray, pray, pray. And it works, guys. I'm yeah. telling you, I've yeah. seen the prayers work. I've seen it work. Yeah. I've seen it move. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you enough how even, again, night and day from the raid and the way that moved to today mm-hmm. and the fact that that had been hanging over for two years, knowing that eventually... It was going to have to be some type of a reckoning. I, I said to Charlotte, I go, 
Yeah. One of the bright spots about them doing this is now we can have an end. Right. Because one so way or another, they're not, you know, yes, they've been they've been spying, they've been recording, oh, they've yeah. been listening, and they're going to until this case is over, maybe even after. But to know that there will be an end to this, yep. that it's coming, does give even more reprieve than uh, it did before. So, yep. like, look, God has taken the lead on this, and and I always say, you can use me as, as any way he wants. Well, that's, I think that's a good place to end on because I agree with you. We need to allow the Lord to lose, use us any way he wants to. That's the whole point. And secondly, I think we need to, uh, there's two ways you can support Siaka. One of them is to pray for him. Please. So please pray for Siaka. Please pray for his family, his wife, Charlotte, just beautiful people. And uh, we're just honored to be here with you guys because you're such awesome people. Thanks. But secondly, um, there is a Give, Send, Go. Can you just tell them where to go for that? Uh, so you want to go to Give, Send, Go. Uh, Hashtag? No, back is not hashtag. I'm so used to going to slash. slash sorry. Yeah. The gives and go slash Siaka. S-I-A-K-A. Very simple right there. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you can get your support. If you can't do it financially, we get it. Yeah. You know, Biden inflation sucks. So at least spread the word. And mm -hmm. again, please pray because that is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing how it works there. So That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Siaka. He's a free speech advocate. He's a wonderful actor, he's a creator, and uh, a man of God and a leader in our community. So we just want to support you, and we want to thank love you, you and uh, keep praying for him. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in to the Babylon Bee. <laughs>